What is up guys, Awesome Nerd Show here, back again with another Monday Night Rewind, going back 20 years to the Monday Night Wars, and this week we are looking at Raw number 223 and Nitro 101, so of course this is from August 18th, 1997, and as always we'll go ahead and start with WWF Raw first, and this took place in Atlantic City, New Jersey, which kind of played some pivotal parts or not pivotal, but like parts throughout the show. Um, but the show started off with um, Rick Rude. And by the way, I went through and watched a bunch of these old roles. Like in the past, like I started at the very first episode of Raw. And I've been watching ever up to probably in May or June of 98. But of course I've stopped now since going back to do this. And so I've just gone back to 97. But I started, you know, watching them ever since the network came out. But I don't remember this episode at all. Like I feel it wasn't there before and now it's back up but anyways this first segment that kicked off the show was rick rude coming out and he had an in-ring interview performed by vince mcmahon and he just claimed that he's an, an insurance salesman more than an insurance policy and he says you know you supply the buck and i supply the bang um so saying pretty much if you pay him to do whatever you want he'll do the work for you um vince questions if he if it was sean michaels or if it was triple h hunter Hearst Helmsley that paid for rude and rude Rude just responds with saying, you know, it doesn't matter who paid him, but he was paid a handsome amount to do his job. And I assume it was just Shawn Michaels. I don't know if they ever clarify that or not. Uh, but then to end off the segment, he just keeps making um, insurance company quotes, but like he throws his name in like i think it's like state farm or something it's like like a good neighbor state farm is there but it he replaces rick rude or um yeah his name inside of it or whatever it's kind of weird um, but that ends the first segment of the interview um we then get a part backstage with owen hart and british bulldog backstage talking about that the lod will get a preview of what's coming up at ground zero their match tonight and that they are going to destroy the lod um and it will be fatal during the fatal four way for them or something just kind of sounded weird whatever um but this is part that this uh location plays into with um atlantic city so it keeps throughout the show it cuts in which i'll like say each part but not like describe exactly what happens but um it cuts to um like a view of the atlantic city from i don't know it's black and white video so i assume from like the 50s or 60s something along there but then it's like so it's like showing the like same footage and then it switches to modern day so in 97 of this um same like viewer shot of the city so you just see a difference between the old days and now um we then get a right after that before the um next mash match starts we get a thing it's like a little video thing thrown backstage and it's of sergeant slaughter and Shawn michaels in the back arguing so it's, it's just like they're on the other side of a curtain and they're just standing there arguing but you can't um, hear any audio or anything it's just a visual of them arguing and that leads into our next match of owen hart british bulldog versus the lod the legion of doom um so first starts off with a recap of the legion of doom versus the godwins from last week so if you're in last week's episode you know what happened um, there with um, them getting attacked with the bucket and that whole sort of thing in the strap match and so after that recap we then um, start the match and LOD starts with the upper hand and so Hawk is just um, completely like destroying um, Owen and Bulldog whichever one's being tagged into the match but we get um, Hawk ends up uh, shooting Owen into the turnbuckle and goes for you know a tackle into the corn buck uh, corner turnbuckle if i can talk um but owen ends up moving and hawk rams his shoulder into the post and falls outside the ring and from there bulldog ends up grabbing onto hawk and then at this point animal and the ref are distracted by owen on the corner so bulldog's able to do this without any like interference or getting the dq or anything but he grabs animal or hawk and throws him into the um steel ring steps um we then get a um hawk and bulldog back in the ring and they're fighting this time and they do a double clothesline um on each other but then they you know do the slow get back up and they reach over and each tag their partner so animal and owen then switch into the match and at this point the godwins uh come down to the ring and they're just kind of one like wandering outside the ring animal does a body slam onto owen and owen goes for the pin or an animal goes for the pin but the bulldog ends up uh, running in breaks it up and hawk comes in after bulldog and from there hawk and bulldog then from you know the interference start fighting into the corner and phineas gets up on the apron and starts to 
distracting Animal. Henry then comes in from behind and nails Animal in the back of the head with the bucket again. And um, this is all as uh, the referee is dealing with Hawk and Bulldog as, you know, they were f went fighting off into the corner. So again, this all happens without any DQ because the ref didn't see it. And so from that, Owen then gets the pin off of the shot on Animal. And so Owen and Bulldog end up winning the match. And the Godwins start attacking um, the LOD and officials run out to um, break them up and you know get them all to the back next up we have some uh, mankind in the back and he's just making some comments on uh, tagging with the undertaker in the match tonight you know just saying stuff about um being trusted and trusting undertaker and stuff we then go to an old time footage there of atlantic city again but this time it's um footage of the women of the miss america pageant and it's just an old black and white video and that's all i don't know why they showed that but just i guess this show women in bikinis but of course it's like from the 50s or 60s uh, the next up we get Shawn michaels backstage and he's again still just mad and complaining saying that you know he's got the shaft for the whole undertaker summer slams part and that he's pretty much being fed um to the line you know everyone's turning their back on him and he's just suffering and uh he keeps coming saying you know that if you paint me into a corner you'll get what's coming and so that's all that um he really mentions out of that just going on mad that he's being blamed for everything we next get a match between brian christopher and flash funk and to start the match off sunny comes out and you know is the guest ring announcer as she's doing a lot this time probably just to get her out on tv for people but then the two competitors come out brian uh gets on the uh, microphone and says that his um, loss last week was a fluke and that to prove it was a fluke he wants um, to face off against a heavyweight and so from there Flash is in the back then like here's this whatever and Flash says you know if Brian thinks that he's gonna use me as a stepping stone he has another thing coming so you know thinking that he's as a heavyweight is being used by a lightweight to try and get over and to be moved up more but he's not gonna allow it um so then the match starts and the you know the people come out are out at the ring the competitors and uh, JR keeps harassing Jerry the King Lawler about being Brian Christopher's father. And again, Lawler just continues to deny it. So in the match, we get uh, Flash ends up doing a drop kick um, onto Brian, who then falls over the top rope. And then um, Flash then baseball slides out or slides into uh, Brian Christopher as he's standing up from the outside and sends Brian uh, flying into the railing around the ringside. And then back inside the ring, Brian Christopher does a drop kick from the top rope onto the back of Flash Funk's head. And then Brian also from the top, like since Flash is knocked out, Brian then gets up on the top rope and Lawler gets up from the commentary table and he walks over to the ring and, you know, he's yelling up at Brian Christopher, you know, to do the pile driver and get down you know get down off the top rope and do the pile driver and it's distracting law brian and so with this distraction flash flunk's able to get up and he you know reaches over and hits the ropes and so brian gets racked on the top rope in the corner and then from he there he falls off and so flash funk then gets up on the top rope and does his 450 splash and he gets the pin off that and because of this whole um stuff that went down uh jerry the king lawler is mad about it and so he gets into the ring and starts yelling at brian christopher and so um just kind of showing more stuff going on with their relationship of you know Lawler saying he's not his son but yeah he's telling him to do his pile signature pile driver and that when he loses he's mad about it all the time and stuff so just furthering their relationship stuff next up we get Undertaker backstage and um he talks about how he's running out of patience for Shawn Michaels you know Shawn saying that he claiming you know he's always or he's the victim and all this but he has no time for that and that um he will never forgive mankind and that he will take mankind out if he crosses the line in their um tag match tonight and next up we get a match between the sultan and ken shamrock um so and again right as the match is starting we get another thing of sergeant slaughter backstage in like the same area that he was arguing with Shawn michaels but this time he's arguing with hunter hearst helmsley again we don't hear the commentary but you can just see like it's a heated argument going on and so back into the match um we get a part where sultan and ends up getting knocked outside of the ring and Shamrock goes out after him but when he does the Sultan ends up grabbing on Shamrock and throwing him into the steel stairs so we're getting a lot of steel stairs and um on Raw tonight and then after that and you know the rush is tracking and everything the Iron Sheik ends up walk, walking over and hitting Shamrock in the back with the um, Iranian flag. And then we go back into the ring for the end, or to be towards the end or whatever. Um, Shamrock ends up doing um, belly to belly suplexes, a small toe to the Sultan. And so the Iron Sheik gets up on the apron trying to, you know, cause a distraction. But Shamrock pulls him into the ring and then belly to belly's him, which 
you know, Iron Cheek's older at this point. He doesn't really, I was going to say he doesn't wrestle anymore, but he probably did wrestle indies and stuff like that at that point still. So, but he, you know, not in the best condition. And so Shamrock belly the bellies him. And then Shamrock goes for the Hurricane Rana on the Sultan and applies the ankle lock to get the win. Then next up, we have a Nation of Domination uh, coming to the ring with their newest member, The Rock, as you saw in the last or heard in the last week's episode was the episode where the rock joined the nation of domination and that he wants an interview with jr so jr has to get out and, or get up from the commentary table and go in the ring and so the whole part is like comments from the rock and farouk just going back and forth switching you know between who's saying what um so farouk starts off and he's saying that um under you know because talk about how ahmed's injured and no longer part of the nation but he says, you know, that under Ahmed's um, skin, there was a white man trying to get out. And so he's making, you know, kind of somewhat racial comments there about Ahmed Johnson. And that Farouk will kick Crush and Savio Vega's ass at their street fight coming up at ground zero. And then we get to The Rock. And um, so The Rock tried to do, mentions how, you know, because the people obviously start chanting. And he says, you know, that he tried to do the right, correct things right away. You know, be the baby face or the good guy. Do everything the right way. You know, the all-American guy. But all it got him was chance of die, Rocky die, and Rocky sucks. And so that's why he ended up turning and joining the nation. And that the DOA is a group of racist people, which is kind of funny because the Harris brothers, so Skull and Eight Bull, aren't said to be like Nazis or something. Or they're like part of like skinhead groups or whatever and stuff. So I could see them actually being racist, but I don't know why they would say that on TV though, calling them out. But then he continues on saying, you know, that the new nation will earn respect by any means necessary ending it off with the Nation of Domination salute. And that gets interrupted by the DOA showing up on the Titan Tron on their motorcycles and um, Crush issues a net challenge to the nation, telling them to meet them in the parking lot and, you know, they'll settle their differences. And so from there, the nation runs up the ramp to the back. And so then we get into another set of footage of Atlantic City and it shows um, footage of the bathing suit police. And so it showed that women like were being stopped by other people and the person would have a ruler and would like measure parts of the body with the amount of skin showing and stuff so it's just kind of weird with the ways things were back in the old days then next up we get a backstage segment of triple h with china and triple h mentions you know that he's not afraid of mankind or undertaker and that once again sean does the crime and i pay the time as he uh, stated it which is funny because i think it's a reference to the curtain call you know, because Sean was a part of the curtain call and it was supposedly like his idea. But since he was the champion at the time and then Scott Hall and Kevin Nash left, that Triple H ended up having to face crime or whatever or pay the time for the crime of the curtain call. And so it's just kind of a reference to that. Then we get the DOA and Nation of Domination in the parking lot. And so they start fighting and uh, change, which is, this is kind of funny. Um, so chains and comma. So like each person, you know, like of each. So then trying to think. So the nation or DOA is standing there like with a bunch of uh, cars behind them and the na uh, nation members come in and they all, you know, like pair off with the cross from each other, one person for e from each team. And so like the nation charges at the DOA and they start fighting. Well, Chains ends up like when they charge, Chains and Kama are paired off together and Chains like picks Kama up and kind of tosses him behind him onto one of the cars and it ends up breaking out the back window. Well, that if you've listened to the Bruce Pritchard podcast on the with the Jim Cornette episode, he talks about that they did that and that was Jim Cornette's car and they no one ever told him about it. And so when he found out about the window being broken was when that segment aired on Raw. So I just thought that was funny and I remember him talking about that and then seeing this part and I was like that's got to be the part there um, so that's kind of funny so that's Jim Cornette's car being broken in the back there and then while they're all fighting you start hearing the engine drive on the motorcycles and you can see over the side that the Los was get on the um, DOA's motorcycles and they um, go riding off through the parking garage area and the DOA stops fighting with the nation and they go chase after them and then next up we get a match between the road dog Jesse James of course he's not really the road dog at this point is just jesse james and he's facing off against brian pillman who is still wearing a, a dress at this part so we get into the match and so as one of the parts is that keeps happening to brian is that his opponents always like to lift up the dress and like show off his underwear so again uh jesse james ends up doing that to uh, pillman in this match again uh jesse goes for a um, dive off the top rope but brian ends up like moving and so as you know jesse james 
like comes flying down to the map. Pillman, you know, like steps aside and like puts his hand on his back to like push him down more into the map. And then Pillman picks him up and does a DDT on him. Well, as soon as he does that, because, you know, that's, like, like one of his finishers, I believe. And so he could, you know, go for the pin off of that. But Goldust and Marlena end up, they come walking out. And Goldust just walks straight to the ring and gets inside and just drops an elbow right onto Jesse James. Which, you know, then becomes a disqualification. And so Jesse James ends up winning the match then by DQ. And so uh, Brian Pillman still has to wear the dress. And so Michael Cole then comes like running out and starts interviewing Goldust on the ramp. Because obviously after he does that to Jesse James, he walks back up the ramp towards uh, Marlena. And Goldust says that he just that he did because he just wanted uh, Pillman to wear the dress for another week. And so this is, you know, really pissing Pillman off. So he gets grabs a microphone and he starts like ranting and raving. And he challenges Goldust to another match. And he says, you know, this time that if he loses, he will leave the WWF forever but if he wins he will get marlena for 30 days and uh so this makes goldust mass and he keeps saying nope not gonna happen but then pillman goes i forget how he says it but he makes a claim that uh dakota which is goldust and marlena's daughter that is actually his love child with marlena and so that pisses goldust off and goldust runs towards the ma um, ring and starts or gets in the ring to chase after Pillman and so because of that Marlena starts saying fine we uh we accept the challenge and so at ground zero zero they're gonna have the match of gold dust versus Brian Pillman and as it said if Pillman loses he will ha leave the WWF but if he wins uh he gets a spit um 30 days to spin with Marlena and there we then get into segment two or hour two not segment two hour two of raw and we get um, Vader versus Paul Bear, or sorry, Vader with Paul Bear versus the Patriot. And so as soon as the as soon as the um, match starts, Bret Hart comes walking out onto the ramp, and he, of course he's holding the Canadian flag. And then in the match, uh, Vader dominates most of it, like pretty much the whole thing, until he goes for a Vader bomb. Uh, but Patriot ends up getting his knees up to block the Vader bomb, and then he grabs the Uncle Sam or the Full Nelson Slam onto Vader, and you know gets that, and so that's his finisher, and so. He he goes the pin, but Brett comes walking down the ramp, and the Brett starts. Actually, I don't know if he gets the winner. I forget how the match ends, unless I'm just uh, missing it. But I want to say he maybe gets the win on Vader. So I don't know. I didn't write it down. But um, Brett ends up walking down the ramp, and the Patriot, you know, starts yelling at Brett while he's standing on the apron. Apron. So Vader gets up and uh, starts to attack the Patriot from behind. The Patriot from behind and starts, you know. It pulls him back into the ring and just starts beating on and goes to do a Vader bomb again. But Bret Hart by this time has gotten into the ring. And so as Vader's going up for the Vader bomb, Bret takes the Canadian flag and just drapes it over the Patriot. So Vader's you know, going to do the bomb right on top of the flag on the Patriot. Well, as Vader's doing his bounce to come off the ropes, he notices that the flag is on and gets down and um, starts yelling at Bret. He picks the um, flag up off a of Patriot and then breaks it because the flag's on a stick and breaks it over his knee. And so Vader and Bret then start fighting each other. And so they're fighting around the ring and then Owen and British Bulldog then come running out to help Bret. And finally Sergeant Slaughter runs out and breaks the group up and uh gets brett to go to the back while vader and patriot are in the ring then we get some more atlantic f city footage so nothing much different i think it's the same as the first segment actually then after that we get a stone cold injury update or injury recap so again just showing the SummerSlam footage of Owen dropping or doing the pile driver onto Stone Cold and uh, injuring his neck and where he got paralyzed or whatever. And it just showed it in slow motion and um, Vince, you know, talked and discussed about it the whole time. But then to go along with that, we then get a JR doing an interview with Stone Cold in a hotel room. I think it's in like Pittsburgh or something, they said. And it took place earlier that morning or so they say. Um, but Stone Cold talks about that no one, like after the injury, no one ever called to check on him. Owen has held a pay for what he did to, you know, for almost ending his career. Then he mentions, you know, saying that he has to see a specialist the next day and that um, no matter what he will do, as in Stone Cold will do whatever he wants to do. He'll like take the doctor's advice, but in the end, he'll just do what he wants to do. And then at the very end claims, you know, that he will be at ground zero, whether it's to hand the title over because he can't wrestle anymore or whether to defend it in the Fatal 4 tag match but no matter what he said he will be there and then to end off the show we get our main event of the night which is the Triple H and Shawn Michaels match versus Undertaker and Mankind and again this is 
uh, before they are officially DX. It's just Triple H and Shawn Michaels, but they, you know, did their whole come together thing last week. And so, especially this past weekend and stuff, WWE's posted a bunch of stuff about the 20 year reunion, 20 year anniversary of the D- DX, even though, like I said, they're not actually DX because it's still acting like two separate people. They're just put on a, this myth mix match tag team match um so to start off um as undertaker's walking it because it starts out with triple h and Shawn michaels and then um undertaker or mankind and undertaker is the order and so as undertaker's coming out sean's standing on the outside of the apron like by the stairs on their side where they're going to be standing you know for the tag and uh sean gets into the camera's face or whatever and starts talking to the camera and saying like we he's like here give me the camera and you get in there and wrestle and i just thought that was funny he's trying to talk the cameraman into wrestling um so at the beginning of the match um Mankind starts fighting off both Triple H and Sean like throughout the week and they keep doing like a double team so like one will be in and then they'll tag and they'll both fight until the ref finally gets tired of it and sends one out and then they'll tag again and just they just both keep fighting over him. Um, Undertaker does um, then gets tagged in by Mankind and he does um, a thing where he flips Triple H. He, I forget what they call it. It's kind of like a backdrop type thing. So Undertaker bends down and as Triple H is running towards him and Undertaker, you know, just does like the whole stand-up thing and Triple H flies over him. Um, but when he does that, he um, Triple H falls onto Shawn Michaels who's out standing on the floor because he escaped from the Undertaker. And speaking of that, that's all Shawn's doing. Anytime Undertaker's in the match, all Shawn does is try to escape. Like he'll come up and attack Undertaker from behind. But as soon as, as, soon as Undertaker realizes it and like turns around, Shawn will just run and escape. And so that keeps happening throughout the whole match. Um, so then at one point rick rude comes walking out to the ring you know to be the insurance policy and triple h ends up coming off the top rope to do i don't know what move he was doing but he jumped off the top rope and as he's doing it mankind catches him with the mandible claw so you know he's got that hold on him well they kind of fall or fall like walk is pretty much what they do they get into the corner with a, a mandible claw on, but china grabs mankind's legs and ends up grabbing onto his legs you know knocking him down and then drags him, or pulls him out so he gets crotched on the ring post in the corner the whole time throughout the match vince keeps commenting that uh sean michaels and triple h are performing as a better and like more in sync tag team than undertaker and mankind so again he's kind of like hinting and signifying of their being a tag team um and then at one point, Sean goes up and hits the top rope elbow, and then Mankind catches. Uh, Sean then goes to do the man or sweet chin music on Mankind, but uh, Mankind like blocks and catches it into the amand- uh, mandible claw. And then a little bit later on, uh, Taker and Shawn Michaels start fighting outside of the ring, um, and Undertaker is like holding him up in the air, choking him with both hands. And from there, Rick Rude um, comes around the ring with a chair, and he picks it up and is about to hit Undertaker in the uh, back with it but undertaker notices it and turns around and starts chasing after rick rude and he rick rude runs into the ring and so undertaker comes in after him and triple h gets in the way and undertaker picks triple h up and choke slams him and continues on for rick rude while Shawn michaels ends up getting in the ring with the, that same steel chair and nails undertaker in the head with it and undertaker immediately starts bleeding and so um, because he used the chair it results in a dq and then um sean ends up hitting undertaker once again before um the show ends and so we um one last things we get to see is undertaker as a bloody mess and next up we then move on to nitro number 101 again this is from august 18th 1997 and this took place in birmingham alabama and the show starts off with a like pr- um, promo site or i don't know what's called like a already done video of raven and he's just talking a lot about stuff and i couldn't catch or understand what he was really all talking about but he's just talking about how he's uh, um being a misfit and having scars and dealing with the pain of stuff from past life probably referring to like ecw and stuff but from there we get into the actual show and it starts off with the nitro girls dancing in the ring so we're already starting off with the nitro girls and you know my feelings about them um but th- from there we get into our first match of harlem heat with Jacqueline or Miss Jack or whatever you want to call her from as she was in WWF um and she, but they're taking off Buff Bagwell and Scott Norton and they come out with Vincent of course all from the NWO uh, Buff Bagwell is playing a, like a lot of games and um posing at the beginning it's like he'll do something and then walk over to where the cameraman is on the apron and start like talking into the camera and like posing you know flexing and stuff just doing all sorts of crazy things um buffin at one point ends up slinging booker t into the um ropes while vincent is up on the apron and so as he's standing up on the apron and booker t gets thrown into him he elbows booker like in the head or something and so 
Um, Harlem Heat gets the win by DQ due to Vincent's interference. And then next up we get a match between Barbarian versus Mortis. And he's coming out with James Vandenberg. And so again continuing on the feud of Barbarian and Ming against Mortis and Wrath. Um, so in the match Barbarian ends up uh, going for a tackle in the corner. And Mortis ends up moving and Barbarian ran his shoulder into the post. Similar to what happened on WWE at, or on Raw. And then Mortis go, um, comes off the top rope for a crossbody. But Barbarian ends up countering it into a power slam and then barbarian gets the win by using a super kick on uh, mortis and so wrath then comes running out and it um, attacks barbarian with the death penalty which is just his side slam finisher and then ming ends up following and puts on the tongan death grip onto wrath and that's how the whole segment well they then get split up and so the match is ended then we get eric bischoff coming out for an in-ring promo and he's pretty much talking about the class of champions which is happening thursday um so it's kind of like a mini pay-per-view type thing but it's free it was free on tnt at this point but it's on thursday night and the crowd start chanting for um larry zabisco but eric mentions you know that he better not come down because obviously larry's at the commentary table at this point he's always in the first um half of nitro and um eric mentions that he better not come down because you know he has the restraining order and then mentions that he's happy that um the giant got arrested the last week and that he mentions i don't know what he's talking about if it's going to be at clash champs or what but he says that you'll see him on uh commentary because he wants to be able to say what he wants to say while um you know jj dylan keeps coming out and saying you know what he wants probably in reference to the whole sting stuff and so that he'll be on commentary to be able to say whatever he wants we then go to a me gene interview on the ramp with Ric Flair and Kurt Henning and they're talking about how the two will be um, tag team partners at the Clash of Champions against Six and Conan of the NWO and that's all that really is mentioned or said in that interview. We think in a match between Swingin' or Dan I've heard both said Swingin' or Dancing Stevie Richards versus Scotty Riggs. Stevie is this first time I've seen him on TV besides from the um, Nitro 99 episode or the episode two weeks ago with their three hour special thing he was on there but he was just in normal clothes but this time he's you know in his wrestling attire and he's in pretty much his bwo so if you remember him from ecw being in the blue world order or bwo he's wearing the exact same thing he's just not wearing a bwo shirt it's the only difference but let's see throughout the match uh riggs goes to do a monkey flip but ends up something ends up happening there's like a botch that happens and so stevie just flips himself over Riggs, like you know to the onto his back like doing a back bump but stevie ends up getting the win with his finisher the stevie kick so just a super kick and then raven comes through the crowd and starts attacking um stevie and hits him with the ddt we next go to another me gene interview on the ramp this time with jeff jarrett and eddie guerrero and they talk about how jarrett will have a match against steve mongo mcmichaels at the clash of champions and that eddie will have a match against chris jericho at the clash and then while they're doing that of course they're out there with uh deborah mcmichaels and and um, Alex Wright comes walking out. He's not dancing out this time. Um, but he comes walking out and starts talking to Deborah, sa saying that he wants to join on Deborah's team. Um, but Deborah tells him no. But then after he leaves, she says to me, Gene, but maybe if he wins a title, um, just showing that. And then they mention like commentary and stuff says, you know, pretty much if you have a type if you have a title deborah will let you into their group so with with alex wright if he wins the title at some point he can um, then join the group we then get an nwo black and white pre-made video and this time they're celebrating the nwo birthday so they're doing like party gifts of like pin the tail on the donkey but they're using like silly string and spraying it onto a picture of jj dylan i think that someone just like it's just a figure someone drew on a dry erase board and said it was jj dylan and there's like spraying silly string on his butt in the picture um but then from there we get into our match of jeff jarrett and eddie Guerrero versus crispin wall and um, steve mongo mcmichaels um mongo wants jarrett to get in the ring and you know start off with him but jarrett keeps running away and so it starts off with him and guerrero and at one point mongo gets guerrero into the corner and um jarrett keeps trying to sneak attack mongo but mongo ends up catching him but as he's you know grabbing onto jarrett you know to get at him Eddie Guerrero comes around and starts attacking Mongo's leg so they're weakening him up and then throughout the match or towards the end Mongo's on the outside and he walks because I think he gets thrown out of the ring or something but he's right um, by Deborah, and so he like taps on her and she turns around and acts all scared and stuff and she drops Jeff Jarrett's US title and so Mongo ends up picking it up and getting like up into the ring and hits Jared on the head um, while he's pinning Chris Benoit and so after that Benoit ends up you know rolling over onto Jarrett and getting the win. Next 
next we get another Nitro Girls dance segment. So, boom. Uh, then we get a recap of J.J. Dillon's um, offers to Sting from last week. So, just a little video package um, replaying that. We then get Hall and Nash in, or Scott Hall and Kevin Nash in an in-ring promo. Um, and again, Scott Hall's talking about how it's a sellout in, in the arena and that millions more around the world are watching at home just to see the NWS. So again, going on with that, everyone's here just to see us type thing. Like you mentioned last week, that I was kind of confused about. And then he talks about that in their match tonight against, at the Clash, I believe it is, against Lex Luger and DDP, that they will prove that they are the best tag team in the world. Or no, I guess that was, that match is tonight. We then get another Nitro Girl segment. And from there, we get into another match and this time it's six versus um, Ric Flair and so at the very beginning Ric Flair's doing his woos at six or X-Pac as I um starts doing his crotch chops so again we're seeing crotch chops early on before um DX is officially formed when they you know make it pretty well known um then um so throughout the match at one point um six does his bronco ride as they're calling it so bronco buster in the corner and then another point uh rick flair does his um turnbuckle flip you know where he gets thrown into the turnbuckle and he flips up out of the ring and he goes out onto the floor then a little bit later six goes tries to go again for another bronco ride but um rick flair moves out of the way and so six just hits the um like turnbuckles and he's got to be careful with that because that's how he rips his butt all the time <laughs> they use that multiple times um and from there Ric Flair gets the figure four put on to six, but before six and tap, the NWO members run out. So Flair gets the win by disqualification. And then Kurt Henning runs out and clears the ring, giving the win to Flair. Next up, we get another Mean Gene interview on the ramp, um, this time with J.J. Dillon, and he brings out Nick Patrick. J.J. says that um, the executive committee has like made a decision on the Road Wild accusations and that Nick Patrick's Road Wild actions and that he has passed the things and so nothing will happen to him. Pat Nick Pactor starts on um, and he turns the blame again I mean, to um, Randy Anderson for what he did during um, for Randy's decision during the Lex Luger against Hulk Hogan match and so that causes Randy Anderson to come out saying you know why do you keep blaming everything on me but JJ dismisses them both and just telling them to drop it and ends that interview. We then get our next match of La Parka with coming out with Sonny Ono against the Ultimate Dragon and this was as for a match of you know like Cruiserweight and the Luchador side it was very it was a very good entertaining match match um at one point dragging does goes for a top rope plancha onto the parka on the floor and while they're outside of the ring oh, obviously i assume la parka ends up getting up first because then he grabs onto dragon and tosses him into the um, steel stairs so again we're going into stairs again like on raw and then we get back into the ring and ultimate dragon goes to do or does a top rope frankensteiner onto la parka and then switches it into the dragon sleeper but um sunny ono ends up getting up on the apron and creates the distraction so you know dragon releases the parka and starts going over the sunny trying to to do with him well then sunny goes to do a kick to hit um, the ultimo dragon but dragon ducks and la parka ends up getting hit and then dragon applies the dragon sleeper again to get the win then next up we get another match of kurt henning versus the giant kurt henning ends up at the beginning of the match um slaps the giant in the face and that's the very first action of the match and then we get into it and so the giant is just tossing um kurt henning around and he keeps slapping him with his hands you know it's like big hands are like frying pans he just keeps slapping him on the back on the chest everything um the giant suplexes kurt henning and goes to do the choke slam but eric bischoff comes running out to the ring standing in the aisleway but you know claiming that um the giant has uh come in within 50 feet of him even though you know he's ran out to get the giant within 50 feet and so he starts calling for um security and to come out and arrest the giant uh, like he's calling for Doug Dillinger and the other security members to come out and arrest him. But the giant, um, but Doug says, you know, since, or I don't know if he says, but it's implied that since Eric was the one that walked out and not the giant, that um, he can't do anything because the giant's just out there doing his job. And so the giant gets out of the ring and starts walking towards Eric Bischoff since, you know, the security's not going to do anything. And Eric starts to head back up the ramp. But as he does, Larry Zabisco comes walking down the ramp. And so they've kind of like pinned in Bischoff. So he starts to try to exit through the crowd and giant catches up to him and grabs him, pulls him back into the entrance ramp and just grabs a hold on him and Eric's trying to, you know, break free and everything. And they start walking back up the ramp. And uh, I think he ends up getting loose or something and just goes off running and then the giant chases after him and then next we get our weekly road report from lee marshall and he's from columbia south carolina so that's where next week's nitro is going to take place and then that leads into a mean another mean gene interview and this time in the ring again with jj dylan and this time they're um, going he's there to you know deal with sting stuff again and so he's talking about that 
you know, he's tired of waiting on Sting to, you know, accept his, or waiting on Sting to accept offers that he keeps giving him. So he wants, this time he wants Sting to open a line of communication. And by doing that, or by, yeah, opening that, that he wants Sting to tell him what Sting wants. And Sting ends up coming. And so he continues on saying, you know, that Sting has until the Clash of Champions on Thursday night to give him a response of who he wants or what he wants to come back. And so Sting comes walking through the crowd. He doesn't come down from the scene, and at least they don't show it, but it just looks like he comes walking down through the crowd and gets into the ring and he grabs onto JJ Dillon and starts pulling him over to one of the sides of the rings and points out to the crowd at signs that say Hulk Hogan and he exits, let's go, JJ exits the ring and goes out and grabs a sign, comes back in, gets in the ring and holds it up to JJ and it, on the sign it says Hogan versus Sting, so it's, you know, saying what he wants, but of course the whole time JJ's like, what do you want? You have to tell me what you want, even though he's clearly you know, giving all the signs you can to be like, this is what he wants. The next we get another NWO pre-made segment thing, a black and white segment, and it's for a new six shirt that's being sold, so you can go ahead and pay for one of those. And then from there, it goes into another black and white NWO promo, and this time it's the party. So I guess if I remember right, the first one was just them in like in the black and white thing, singing happy birthday and stuff like they did in the ring, but in their black and white segments. And this time it was doing their party stuff and where they were spraying silly string on a JJ Dillon uh, drawing and stuff and just doing normal birthday party stuff. And from there we get into our final match of the night, which is Lex Luger and DDP versus the outside. So this is a match I thought was happening at Clash, but it's happening tonight. Um, so to start the match off, Hollins of Scott Hall ends up throwing his toothpick into Luger's face and Luger ends up slapping Scott Hall and so getting another slap in the face to start a match. Um, throughout the match, ta Kevin Nash is tagged in um, and he's wanting DDP and uh, he keeps doing the, um, or he goes or he starts doing the diamond cutter logo so just your hands up making a diamond shape and then and when he does the bang he ends up doing a crotch chop so again more crotch, crotch chops going on before the into um dx made it big and then throughout the match um kevin nash and scott hall keeps like switching places so like one will be in the ring and then they'll be beating up i think they beat up on uh like ddp pretty much the whole match and so lex luger keeps trying to get into like help DDP and so the referee which is Randy Anderson keeps stopping Luger from getting in the ring and while that's happening Scott Hall and Kevin Nash will, they'll switch with the other person and start doing it and then Randy will turn around and like you know start questioning you know did, did you guys tag and stuff and they're like you know keep making the notion that yes we tagged you just didn't see and so Randy just keeps uh, dealing with that and it happens uh, multiple times throughout the match but n uh, Randy Anderson never does anything because they keep just doing it um so they do that twice in a row and then they do it again later on and again randy questions them nothing happens and then throughout the match uh, hall and ash start double teaming this time while randy's um, stopping luger from getting in and then they switch again so so far where i believe up to four times of it happening and again each time randy anderson doesn't punish them in any way um so then ddp of course um was in the ring the whole time and he was completely wore down but then um every time he starts to get some offensive throughout the match he just keeps getting cut off again but he does finally get that reach out to luger and Lu gets um Luger tagged in um, he starts you know like taking it out on the other two guys well from there um, the NWO runs in and they start to attack Luger and DDP and so as they're beating them up Ric Flair and the Giant come running out to help you know the team WCW and DDP and Lex Luger end up getting the win by DQ since it was the NWO that came out first so again another not another um bad set of episodes there of Raw and Nitro again I liked Raw a little more since we're getting the first time of the DX really actually teaming up in a tag match and I thought the match matches and segments were overall a little better but I am biased towards Raw so I can't really ever make a clear decision or say you know this one was better than the other but if Nitro is better I will mention that I thought it was a better episode but that's going to be it for this week of Monday Night Rewind again going back 20 years to the Monday Night Wars with Raw number 223 and Nitro 101 from August 18th 1997 so if you enjoyed this episode please leave a thumbs up Leave any comments you have down below and hit the red subscribe button to see more. And we'll see you next time.